Hello everyone, thank you for joining me on this demonstration on how to make the mini crochet knot bag pattern. I have been getting requests for market items, things that are quick um, to make and easy to sell at markets. This project is one skein project that I'm using Lion Brands 24-7 cotton yarn for. really, really like this line. Um, I feel like the yarn has this really pretty sheen to it and it comes in a lot of different colors. So for this one, I'm going to use the color amber in the, exam in the example pattern. I've already made a couple up in black and ecru. So this bag takes me just a little over two hours to make. Like I said, one skein of the cotton yarn. And it is about seven and a half inches wide and seven inches tall. So you just pull this larger strap through the smaller strap and you've got this little wristlet in your knot bag. So to make the project, in addition to the yarn, you're going to need an H hook, a pair of scissors, a stitch marker, I'm simply using a bobby pin, and a yarn needle. So let's go ahead and get started. To begin this project, we are going to make a slip knot and chain 36. Okay. Now we are going to create our first round of this project by working both the front and back side of the foundation chain row, and that will create our first round. So to begin, we're gonna start with one single crochet in the second chain from the hook. That first chain that we skip will become our turning chain. And in this pattern, the turning chains will not count in your stitch count. So your chain ones will not count in the rows moving forward, rounds, pardon me, moving forward. So in the second chain from the hook, we're going to place our first single crochet and we're going to continue to do single crochets in each chain to the end of the foundation chain row. So by the time we reach the end, we will have 35. Okay, here we are in our last single crochet on that side. And then we're going to turn the foundation chain row so that we are working the back side. So we're gonna go right back into that same stitch on the back side and single crochet. So that will be stitch 36, then into the next one with another single crochet. So by the time we get to the end of this side of the foundation chain row, we will have made a total of 70 single crochets to complete round one. Okay, we are coming to the last few stitches here to complete round one. Last one here. And you'll see that first stitch that we skipped in that foundation chain row. So what we do now so you're going to slip stitch to the first single crochet that we made. And chain one. So for round two, that next stitch in the round will become stitch one here of our round two. So we're gonna go into this and half double crochet. So there's our first stitch and I'm gonna slide my stitch marker in there and then we're going to place one more half double crochet right into the same stitch so two half double crochets in that first stitch of the round and then we're going to skip the next two stitches single crochet into the next stitch followed by two half double crochets in the same stitch 
So to sew a total of three stitches into that one stitch. You can see the one single crochet, the, the first half double, and then the second half double. Then you skip the next two stitches, go into the next one, and repeat that. One single crochet, two half double crochets, same stitch. Skip the next two. So that's going to be the sequence that we continue all the way around until we get to the last stitch of the round and then we will complete one single crochet and only one half double crochet in the last stitch of the round. So let's go ahead and continue to work all the way around and we'll meet back towards the end of round two. Okay, here we are approaching the last stitch in our round two. So I'm gonna skip these two stitches Place one single crochet in this stitch and then one half double crochet. And you can see here is our turning chain, which does not count in our stitch count. And we are gonna slip stitch into the first stitch of the round that we made. So let's slip stitch, chain one, and then we're gonna place two half double crochets in that next stitch, which will be the beginning of round three. I'm gonna slide that stitch marker into my first half double crochet for this to count as my first stitch of the round. And then that sequence that we completed for round two just continues all th the way through round 16. So skip the next two, single crochet, and then two half double crochets in this stitch. Skip the next two one single crochet, two half double crochets. And as you work up the body of the bag, you'll notice that the rounds are being worked up inside out. So the wrong side of the fabric is going to be facing you. And then we will turn that right side out when we meet back here to finish. So let's go ahead, continue to work up through round 16, and we will meet back here at round 17. Okay, I have just completed round 16 of the body of the bag, so I'm going to slip stitch into that first stitch and chain one. For the final round of the bag, we're just going to make one single crochet in each stitch around the top of the bag. Going to move my stitch marker, slip stitch to that first stitch of the round, and fasten off, leaving a tail just for weaving in. So now let's move on to the straps. Okay, now that we have completed the body of our bag, let's begin the straps. There are two straps a large and a small strap. You'll see here on the bag that one strap, the larger strap will be attached to one side and the smaller strap to the other so that we can pass that through to close it and create the handle. So to begin the straps, we're going to make a slip knot. Go ahead and leave a long starting tail for attaching the strap later. And then we are going to chain 12. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten, eleven, 10, 11, and 12. Now both straps will begin with a chain 12 and work up the same. The only difference is that one is shorter than the other, so there will be less rows on the smaller strap. The large strap will have 39 rows. The smaller strap will have 23. 
when you are working it, your odd rows will be when it is wrong side facing you. You can also know which is the wrong versus the right side by your starting tail. If your starting tail is on the right side, then the right side of the fabric is facing you. So now that we have our chain 12 in our third chain from the hook, we're going to place two half double crochets. Skip the next two chains and place one single crochet and two half double crochets into that same chain. Skip the next two chains, one single crochet, two half double crochets in the same chain. Skip the next two chains. You're going to finish with one single crochet in the last chain of the row and chain two to turn. So in that very first stitch after the, after the chain two, we're gonna place two half double crochets for row two. Skip the next two stitches and place one single crochet and two half double crochets in the same stitch. So just like the body of the bag, only we're working in rows instead of in the round. So skip the next two, one single crochet, two half double crochets. And then in the, we'll skip two, and in the last stitch of the round of the row, pardon me, we're gonna place one single crochet. Now I will say, if this is easier for you, I tend to make that first or that last single crochet of the row of the row really tight. So it, if you're that like that too, it can be hard to get your hook in there. So if you want to cheat a little bit, it's totally fine. You can just go up under the turning chains and make that single crochet and your rows will still be nice and straight on the edge and it may be just a little bit easier. So beginning row three, two half double crochets in that first stitch. Skip the next two. One single crochet, two half double in the next stitch. Skip the next two. One single crochet, two half double. Ending with one single crochet in the last stitch of the row, or like I said, just up under those two turning chains, one single crochet. And then you just continue to work those rows up until you complete the strap. We can meet back here after the end of the final row of one of the straps, and I will show you how to make the single crochets all the way around the strap to complete it. Okay, here I have completed, or I'm just about to complete the large strap for the knot bag. So I'm going to finish with one single crochet in that last stitch, and I'm gonna chain one. Then we're going to turn our strap so that we can work one single crochet down each side of the strap. When you get to the corners, you'll place two, two single crochets into the corners to turn. So we're gonna do that all the way around until we get back to where we started. We will slip stitch to the first single crochet made and fasten off. You're gonna wanna leave a tail for sewing. Here we are in that last stitch down the side. So I am going to place two single crochets, turn, and then continue to work one single crochet across. When we get to the other corner, we will again turn by placing two single crochets 
in the corner and work up the other side of the strap. I'm going to slip stitch to that first single crochet made and make sure that I leave a long tail of yarn for sewing and I fasten off. And there I have completed my large strap. So go ahead and finish the small strap in the same way and then we will meet back here to assemble our bag. Okay, to begin assembly of our bag, we are going to start by turning it right side out because we've been working it up wrong side out. I've already gone ahead and woven in my yarn tails and here is the body of my bag. And I'm going to begin by attaching my large strap first. So to do that, I'm simply going to align the right side facing of my strap here to the top of this bag. So align the edge and then along the top. I'm gonna to stitch it back and forth across the front and then again ac across the back, weave in the end and trim away to make sure that I have it extra secure. If it is easier for you to pin the straps in place, please do so. I don't do that, I hold mine in place as I stitch, but that is simply maker preference. So you do what works best for you. And if that's pinning, then that is totally fine. So I'm gonna pull that through there and I'm going to go up under a loop here and through a loop here in my strap. And I'm in, like I said, I'm gonna go back and forth from behind and then up under a loop again all the way across. So there I have secured it across the front. I'm just going to move it here so that I can do the same thing across the back. Just back and forth, up under, stitches. To make sure it's extra secure.
Okay, once I have secured it all the way across the back as well, I'm going to weave in my yarn tail. Kind of hiding it here along the inside of the bag. Then I'm going to trim away that excess yarn tail. Now we're going to do the other side. So on the other side with a large strap, I've got my other tail of yarn for sewing. I'm going to align that with the other edge on the back side. Come through the stitch on the edge here and go back and forth across the front and the back just like we did on the other side. This one's a little harder for me to do. I'm on camera because I'm not left-handed. <laughs> so I'm gonna have to turn it. Sorry about it being upside down, but it's the same process back and forth. And then of course you will do the same thing on the other side to attach the small strap, the exact same. Align it with the edge, secure it across the front and the back on both sides. So let's go ahead and complete attaching our straps now. We can meet back here so you can see my finished project. Okay, and now I have finished attaching both straps and I have finished my knot bag. You can simply fold that or pull that, I should say, large strap through that small strap and you have your bag. I hope you have enjoyed making this pattern.